boy was it hard to watch wrestling this week. But today we're taking a look at the AEW content for the week of September 5th to the 9th. Definitely a lot happened after All Out and I was actually going to make a video about uh, everything but to be honest I felt like it was going to be kind of redundant. Everyone was saying basically everything I was thinking and some other things that I didn't even think about. Uh, more importantly, kind of felt like most of the news that, you know, we need to be confirmed wasn't out until like way later, you know, by basically Dynamite, by the time Dynamite was airing was, we finally got like more illustrations of like the full story of what happened backstage, uh, but yeah, I just didn't feel like going into it after that point because I was like, you know what, whatever, uh, what's the point of me saying basically the same thing everyone's saying that you've probably already read online, so instead we're just going to be taking a look at AEW's content for this week to try and kind of recuperate, I mean, their whole show, their brand. And, uh, for wrestling to see if maybe they can pick up the pieces that got left behind and just recover from it. So starting with uh, Elevation, we'll look at that. We'll look at Elevation, Dark, Dynamite, and Rampage. I'll go through this once real quick. Uh, the goal isn't really to go super in-depth into each match or really even review each episode. I'm not going to give like a rating or something like that. Just kind of my general thoughts about it. Uh, maybe I'll say at the end whether I thought it was a strong show or weak show, but that's about as far as I'll go for rating system if you want, but I won't get too in-depth with that stuff. More importantly, this is about looking at Elevation and Dark and uh, Rampage, something I don't see a lot of people talk about too often uh usually it's just kind of wait for everything to come out talk about the little piecemeal stuff here and there as opposed to really picking apart the stuff that goes into elevation and into dark and into rampage which i also kind of feel like gets thrown into the bus a lot of times because oh it's an hour long show and it's pre-recorded most times and who cares but you know there's some really interesting stuff and this week is actually a really good uh contender for that idea of you know, Rampage being just as important as Dynamite, Dark, and Elevation. Uh, so yeah, basically we'll go through uh, Elevation and Dark and just kind of talk about the things that I found interesting. Uh, whether there are few or many, you know, depends on the week. But uh, as far as Dynamite and Rampage, we'll talk more about, you know, storyline stuff, each match that we went through and uh, whatever. So let's get started with Elevation. Uh, Daddy Magic on the mic with Excalibur doing commentary for the full uh, episode was fantastic. I mean, he was a really great addition. He was funny. He did not come off obnoxious at all, which I know some people probably watch his promos and think, oh, that dude is so annoying. And uh, I mean, that's kind of the point of his character. But uh, he did not come off like that at all on commentary. He was hilarious. He, he was super subdued, but in the right way, but still his own character. Uh, he was throwing out hilarious, like, random ras wrestling uh, references, wrestling, uh, talking about Greg the Hammer Valentine. <laughs> if anything, uh, Elevation was totally worth watching for Daddy Magic on the mic. Totally awesome. Um, then we had Julia Hart coming out with a brand new entrance and a new theme song. That was a really good uh, introduction to all that stuff. Super, super awesome. Fits into the House of Black stuff. Uh, she loves it, clearly. You can tell when she goes out there, she's, you know, singing the lyric that she needs to sing, which is the house always wins. Uh, yeah, I'm loving this stuff with the House of Black. I'm sorry to see uh, some of the news continuing with uh, Malachi Black, where it kind of seems like maybe he's not going to be a part of the company anymore. Uh, for a while uh, you know all the best to him hopefully whatever's going on you know whatever he's dealing with I hope he gets through it really well because you know it can be tough dealing with uh, mental health and and even physical health like as a wrestler I can't even imagine but uh, I hope he eventually comes back I hope House of Black doesn't go away because of it because honestly they've been on a roll I feel like everyone uh, every discussion I've seen online for him has been a lot of love for what they've been doing uh, adding Julia Hart in there totally helped reinvigorate her career and a new way that's given her something new to do a new character this introduction this new entrance and everything the new theme song totally fits into adding to her character and i, I liked it a lot i i just can't wait to see uh, more of it and i hope we do see more of it because man it was great i hope we see it on like a rampage or a dynamite soon because as awesome as it is to see on elevation and dark you know it's another thing to see it on television because i think it'll go over really well then a uh, fun little thing i noticed between uh i think it was a match between private party jdx and rather private party versus jdx and brandon gore uh jdx coming out in just some cool x-men gear that's the second time we've seen some marvel gear uh this week with uh starting with jade's 
awesome cosplay of She-Hulk at All Out. That was that was cool. I loved that. That was super awesome to see classic She-Hulk uh, outfit. Obviously, they're talking about the show coming out now, but she looked cool. And uh, JDX just kind of maybe conveniently following suit in Chicago, wearing a uh, very cool X-Men gear, very like Wolverine colors, 90s X-Men. Uh, super cool. After the match, we saw that Matt Hardy is still trying to make amends with Private Party. He has been the past couple weeks basically talking to them, showing remorse for, uh, you know, taking their money and just kind of messing them up really badly early on last year i believe it was mostly and and kind of this year but yeah he he, uh keeps coming out at the end of matches and just kind of like looking solemnly and if only you guys could trust me so yeah just more of that stuff but if you haven't uh, seen any of it well there you go uh then we had a match between sky blue and diamante and sky blue getting all the love for being from chicago wearing some awesome chicago gear uh loved it loved seeing it loved seeing diamante uh she just seems to be like stuck on dark and elevation and i wish we'd see her kind of get pushed in some way towards you know dynamite or towards rampage uh she's a hard worker she's been doing a lot of great wrestling and her and sky blue pulled off a really cool match also, I know I'm really biased in why I'm talking about this is only because she was wearing, uh, Sky Blue was wearing cool Chicago gear, but it was cool! Uh, after that, a match between Nyla Rose and Marina Shafir versus Madison Rain and Queen Aminata. Uh, Marina Shafir and Nyla Rose have been showing that they're a pretty good tag team. Uh, all throughout, they've been doing a lot of really cool you know, matches that just show dominance and technical wrestling. And you have Vicky Guerrero out there doing her stuff too. Uh, I love this tag team. It's a really good tag team. Uh, I feel like I don't see them enough on the main stuff too, along with Diamante, like I was just saying. But, you know, maybe it's for other reasons. Maybe because there's really no way to fit in more women's wrestling somehow in AEW. I don't understand. Um, but yeah, no, they had a fun, solid little match. I'm going to make note though, that there were two really nasty bumps, uh, in this match. One where Queen Aminata and Marina Shafir, I think it was a suplex where they just clashed heads right on the mat and you could see both of them just, oh, oh, brutal. And then, uh, another where I believe it was Nyla Rose taking Queen Aminata or maybe Madison Rain out, um, outside of the apron or rather over the ropes outside of the apron where they both just kind of tumbled looked pretty bad but uh otherwise fun solid little match i feel like marina shafir for some reason has this really bad luck too where she just has these bumps every once in a while where she takes like a bad hit and i just feel bad for her because it it seems kind of out of her control but uh otherwise i like this team i'd like to see them do more i'd like to see like a women's tag title go to them but obviously we've got a lot of troubles with the titles lately but we'll get into that maybe a more later uh, because man is there a really big problem there but uh yeah let's move on to dark dark pretty good this week uh, nothing really crazy of note, just some fun little stuff that I kind of wrote here. Um, Zach Clayton, recent wrestler apparently from the Jersey Shore, might have been on a reality show, I can't exactly remember, but, uh, is it just me, or does he have the Assassin's Creed symbol in his logo behind him? I just kind of felt like making note of that. I thought that was funny looking, I was like, that's like the Assassin's Creed logo, or symbol, but yeah, I don't know. Weird wrestler, weird dude, we'll have to see what he does next. Then we had Missa Kate in a match who didn't get her own entrance, as a lot of people on Elevation and Dark do, but she was wearing some awesome Chicago gear also in Chicago here too, uh, for Dark. Super cool gear, uh, I liked it, like the, the colors of the flag being represented, thought that was cool, thought I'd make note of it, just cause I'm from Chicago, and thought it was fun. And then the other thing I, uh, made note of was Private Party versus Robert Anthony and GPA having an actually solid little match, uh, something I thought was gonna be a quick little squash match or something, but honestly, no, they had a really nice, uh, solid little match there, uh, no Matt Hardy thing at the end, surprisingly, mostly because it kinda feels like they're maybe just letting it sit for the next week that they do it or whatever if they continue the storyline along but otherwise yeah check this match out this one was really fun i mean obviously check out all the matches on elevation and dark but look out for this one specifically this one was uh pretty good now we're finally going to take a look at dynamite man i feel so bad for everyone working in AEW right now that isn't punk or the elite or anyone that was involved in the entire backstage thing at all out because oh just you can feel like everyone is trying their hardest to like move on from it obviously i mean how could you not want to but just a lot of little things here and there done to kind of help i don't know recuperate losses or, or, or fix the problem really quickly 
Uh, I, I especially, I feel bad and I'm going to say, I've been seeing a lot of ridicule for Tony Khan's little promo where he uh, addresses the fans at AEW and he basically announces the vacation of the main title belt and the trios championship belts and announcing all the matches to try and get them to somewhere where they can at least still get their shine and putting on a new tournament i'm gonna say he gets a pass i've seen a lot of people make fun of the promo or or kind of say like man vince mcmahon would never do stuff like this and it's like well dude's under a lot of stress and he had to make up something quick it's one thing if this happened on dynamite and then you know you've got rampage covered and you've you know got no pay-per-view it's another to have a pay-per-view on sunday have all of this news come out by monday tuesday basically to try and figure out what you're going to do for wednesday so in my opinion he gets a pass for this yeah it was a little awkward and you could tell he was reading off a card but i don't blame him just way too much to be handling all at once um like I said, we see the, the trios championship is vacated and is going to be up against uh, Death Triangle and Best Friends and Orange Cassidy, whatever, to see who wins it. Obviously, I think a lot of people probably would have been like, what about Dark Order? They put out a great match at All Out, and I agree, but obviously Dark Order seems to be in a, a weird place right now, dealing with both injuries and Andrade, and maybe it looks like they're setting up 10 to kind of switch or, or, or leave the Dark Order, which is super weird, um, and also you can't have hangman page uh, a fight for the belt this week or whatever tonight because he's fighting his own match later tonight because for the main championship there's a grand slam tournament to see who's gonna win it bunch of weird contestants in this tournament um the two that i thought I didn't really make a lot of sense in my mind were sammy guevara and darby allen uh sammy guevara is just kind of someone who i i see he gets placed in different storylines and different places not really uh, in contention for belt stuff. And if he does do belt stuff, it's all TNT Championship. I think that's really the reason why he was put in this is because he had uh, the TNT Championship, you know, a couple different times already now. I can't remember the number. I think it's three or two or maybe some crazier number. But regardless, uh, and then Darby Allen is having his own thing um, with Sting and, and kind of Miro and kind of the House of Black. So I it just a couple weird contestants here. But yeah, he... Uh, uh, Hangman Page, though, obviously not able to fight in the Trios Championship for the Dark Order because he's going to be uh, fighting in this tournament tonight against Brian Danielson and Brian Danielson versus Hangman Adam Page 3, uh, a rematch that everyone's been waiting for. So yeah, weird, just a weird tournament. I think there could have been uh, different players. If I looked at the roster, I could probably come up with a couple names. I would have said Eddie Kingston, but I think Eddie Kingston uh, caught COVID, so I hope he heals up quick. Because he just came back in that awesome match at Zero Hour. Uh, again, something I wanted to talk about. But then kind of everyone was talking about All Out. But yeah, I feel bad for Eddie. He hasn't been catching a break recently. Hopefully he heals up when we see him soon. Maybe not for the title, obviously. But for something. I, I just love to see him back again. We got MJF coming out. Basically vying to the entire crowd of Buffalo, New York. And them falling for it. Uh, doing a fun little promo. Then Moxley coming out, cutting him off. And them facing off in front of each other. And, uh, you know, just some really great heel work from MJF. Nice to see him back again. Uh, I, I think AEW kind of missed his energy around. Kind of feels like there were a lot of people trying to fill in that spot in, in, in weird, you know, shades. But no one really obviously able to handle the mic like MJF does. So it was super nice to see him back and cutting a promo where he was basically just killing it, you know, both against the crowd, against specific people in the crowd, against Moxley, against people in the back, specifically Tony Khan, making reference to Nick Khan and the game, Triple H, and just his energy was missed. I was glad to see him. But honestly, I think it goes without saying, I'm pretty sure everyone is probably saying the same thing, although I haven't seen any discussion about it because I've just been staying off the internet for right now, uh, where I think Moxley stole the show with his promo afterwards, super passionate, full of energy, and uh, you could definitely tell he wanted to talk candidly about what had happened, but obviously not able to, um, but saying that he was embarrassed, and how could you not be, uh, but man, just what a professional that dude, he's a hard worker, he's been just going at it for weeks now since Punk's been out, uh, now having to fill in that spot again, because Punk can't deliver, <laughs> I feel bad for Moxley too, uh, like I said, I feel bad for a lot of people 
people in AEW, but uh, I would say Moxley's at the top of the list, at least. Maybe not, if not number one, maybe like number two, you know. Uh, he talked about how he was going to go on vacation, and, and he wasn't going to do this, and he was embarrassed, and he was sad that he lost the belt in uh, Chicago, and how he wished he had brought it with him and, and won. And uh, honestly, I'm feeling for him too. I totally agree. Yeah, but otherwise, if you haven't already seen this promo, which I, I mean, you probably have, uh, check this out. It, it's it's just really good. You can definitely tell uh, John Moxley cares a lot about AEW, you know, what it stands for and how it should be represented and how it shouldn't be the way it was. Not even just that that weekend. Obviously, we've been hearing for uh, a weekend, rather, that Sunday at All Out, but obviously just talking more about how there's just a lot of that stigma. We've been hearing for weeks how, you know, tension backstage or really really heavy and this person doesn't like this person and it's just a lot of nonsense that yeah I'm with him I'm tired of hearing that stuff too so yeah check that promo out it's a uh, it's really good so then we finally have the uh trios championship uh or trios championships the belts up between death triangle versus best friends and uh, orange Cassidy, who put on a great match I mean uh I was looking, you know, on Dark and Elevation, and uh, you could see that they were promoting that this match was going to happen, just obviously no trios championship behind it, because I don't think at that point they knew whether they were going to put the belts up for uh, whoever to win between these two, so this match was going to happen regardless, but I'm glad it happened, because, I mean, regardless of those belts uh, being put on the line, they were going to put on a great match regardless, and they did. They they put on a really fun, entertaining match, uh, some fun little, you know, comedy spots that aren't too, uh, not too much straying into the comedy stuff. Just fun little moments between uh, Dan Housen and Alex Abrahantes and Pac as well and getting in with that. And then some of the stuff with the best friends like always. But otherwise a great match and I'm so happy to see Death Triangle win it. Uh, a tag team, even without Pac, you know, a tag team that's been pulling it off pretty well for these past couple weeks too on Rampage and Dynamite and Dark and Elevation. And, uh, it's just nice to, to see some, uh, the championships go to someone and a team that definitely deserves it. And totally congrats to Pac for being the first double champion in AEW with that All-Pacific and the uh, Trios Championship now. Totally deserve it. I loved it. Yeah, super fun match. Check it out. Uh, then, also, just wanted to make note of this, which was during the match, there was a little thing that basically said, at Grand Slam, Swerve in Our Glory is going to be up against the Acclaimed again in a rematch for the Tag Team Belts, which furthers my, like, confusion for a lot of these matches, which is these are people that weren't really involved in a lot of the stuff that was happening on the weekend that had great matches and now they're kind of having them again um and this also gives me an opportunity to talk about the weird ending that happened at all out for those championships or the for the tag team belts where it kind of felt like the ending of it was supposed to make people feel like no no guys swerving our glory you know they did some bad stuff this match but they're still faces to some extent um and then i saw a bunch of stuff saying that no there was a, totally gonna be a heel turn that's not at all what that felt like and it feels like now we're getting that rematch because we're trying to rectify what should have been a heel turn for swerving our glory who kept the belts who who should have you know, done the full heel turn into it. I don't know why they didn't at all out. It's so confusing, but yeah, now we're having a rematch for those belts again at Grand Slam at the end of September. Super weird, super confusing. Why this rematch so soon? I guess it's not that soon, but it feels like, I don't know, it feels like maybe this shouldn't have been announced until maybe like next Dynamite or something until we saw some more interaction between Serve and Our Glory and the Acclaim, but yeah, anyway. Uh, next up, first we had a little kind of recap of the match the four-way match at All Out for the uh, AEW Women's Championship that Tony Storm won, which made me so disappointed. I wanted Jamie Hader to win it so bad. I think a lot of people did, which was surprising to find. I thought I was saying like a crazy, you know, take or whatever you want to call it, a hot take uh, saying that she should have won it, but it kind of seems like a lot of people agreed. Um, then there was a little recap and then we saw a backstage moment where uh, uh, Britt Baker was trying to talk to Jamie Hader and Jamie Hader was dismissing her because at the match at All Out, she cost her the belt a couple times which man such a bummer uh so yeah then we get that little bit and then we go directly into penelope ford versus tony storm just in a fun little singles match uh these two had a great match super good uh super solid fun stuff penelope ford is still doing heel stuff looking crazy because her lipstick is smearing everywhere uh but yeah no this was a, a fun match uh 
I, I take back what I was saying about Tony Storm having a couple flat matches, even though I do think that was true. But I don't know if that's necessarily on her now. Uh, maybe that was just I don't know, a weird occurrence. <laughs> but yeah, no, they had a fun little match here tonight on uh, Dynamite. So check that one out too. But definitely was more interested in the stuff going on between Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker. I hope Jamie Hayter goes for that belt uh, more. I hope they see that people are interested in her winning the championship because that would be fun. Next up was a weird promo of uh, Daddy Magic and Angelo Parker talking about the match uh, at All Out Zero Hour uh, against Took for the FTW Championship, describing it basically in detail and then talking about how Action Bronson came out and interrupted and how dare he touch us and all that stuff. And then it kind of leaves on a weird note where it's implying that it's going to be Daddy Magic and Angelo Parker versus Hook and Action Bronson, which isn't necessarily something that I don't want to see. Uh, it's just very weird. There's no real confirmation. I, maybe I could look somewhere and find that out. I haven't yet, but it just feels weird uh, if that's going to be the match. I hope Action Bronson's ready and not just another one of those weird, here's a celebrity in a wrestling match for no reason, but AEW doesn't seem to be uh, the kind of company to do that. But then again, maybe I'll be proven wrong. Then uh, finally, which again, this should have been earlier or the announcement for this match should have been later uh we have a claim coming out for presumably some kind of match and then just as max caster is about to start rapping uh swerve comes out interrupts everything looks like a super heel uh calls him trash basically or a joke and like i feel like this should have happened and then the announcement that there would be a rematch like between the two i don't know why it was the other way around i feel like this could have been at least something to go off of that's why i was saying it was so weird earlier in the night to see that like oh they're gonna have a rematch for the belts but there's really no reason why oh here's the reason why <laughs> otherwise fine fine little heel versus face promo with the acclaim basically saying you know everyone loves the acclaim we're gonna take those belts yeah fine after that is a promo between, uh, eh, we'll just say the JAS. I mean, it's Jericho, but yeah, a little promo. Eh, nothing of, it, of substance here, just kind of Jericho being like, I will take that belt and I'll fight whoever comes, you know, next and whatever. But uh, I just wanted to make note of something funny, which was <laughs> Sammy Guevara calling Darby Allen a, a turtle lover. And I, it took me a second and then I was like, oh my God, it's a reference to that stupid video where the kid is like, I like turtles. So yeah, just to make note of that that's all otherwise eh, fine promo nothing great though but it did kind of lead me to think that like at all out we had that match of daniel garcia or rather we had that moment where it felt like daniel garcia should have finally made the turn and he didn't again i don't know why they do this i don't know why it didn't happen at the pay-per-view why why not like why not a better what better a place than at a pay-per-view for him to finally turn face, or at the very least, to leave the JAS? If not, maybe, you know, he could still be a healer or whatever he is, a neutral. <laughs> but, you know, just, I, he should have finally, like, bit the bullet and, and left the JAS, but he didn't, and it was weird, and I feel like it should have happened. And that's why I didn't like this JAS promo, because it was just kind of them talking about that, too. And it was like, come on, guys, just have it happen already. Uh, Wardlow coming out with a new entrance theme, which I like better. I like better than this last one. This last one's okay, but this one, pretty nice. I like it. Uh, coming out to fight Tony Nese for the TNT Championship. A uh, quick little squash match. Absolutely nothing here. And then uh, Wardlow getting on the mic, talking about the people on the internet are doubting him, saying his steam is gone. If that's true, I don't know where. I don't think Wardlow's on a slowdown right now. Sure, maybe he's had a couple odd matches but i don't know that a squash match helps him i think he's totally doing fine i think he's got a good dominant reign on the tnt championship i'd love to see him go against some other people uh maybe we'll talk about a potential person later on uh but yeah i mean i, I don't know dude I'd like to see, does anyone else agree? Does it feel like Wardlow is slowing down or, or like he's had, he hasn't had a good match? I feel like he's had a lot of fun, interesting matches. I haven't seen him do anything that I didn't like. So I, I don't know, weird, weird promo, weird squash match. I don't know what the point of this was. 
Next up, we have Brian Danielson versus Hangman Adam Page 3 in the Grand Slam Tournament. Fun little technical match. I feel like the pacing of it was a little slow for most of it, or for like two-thirds of it. The last third of it felt very fiery, very like, now the heat's going, now everyone's up and, and ready for it, and, and it was getting way more, you know, brutal and vicious, whereas beforehand it just kind of, kind of felt a little, a little slow to start, I think, in my opinion. Uh, but otherwise, fine match fine long match technically and uh yeah i mean they had a great match uh it ends in brian danielson winning which is really confusing for me i i don't know what's happening um i feel like everyone's kind of behind hangman going for the title again now that punk's pretty much out of the picture both due to obvious reasons and an injury it feels like it makes sense for adam page to try and go and take the belt again i don't know why they had brian danielson win not that i have anything against him he's obviously a great wrestler and deserves to go against that championship too but at the same time i feel like he's been doing his own thing along with the uh blackpool combat club and also the weird thing the thing that made me angry again is this means now that brian danielson is going to be fighting jericho on the next dynamite which is yet again another rematch of something that we saw it all out what it like i don't understand what the booking was for this why why are we seeing this again? It's I have nothing against Jericho or Danielson, truly. I think they actually had a really fun match at All Out, even though in my predictions video I said that I probably wasn't going to be that excited for it. I actually ended up being really excited for it and watching all of it. I don't need to see it again. I don't know why we are seeing it one more time now next week when it should have been Hangman going for the belt. Super confusing tiny, uh, title tournament and whatever. I, I just, I don't get it. I don't understand. Someone please explain to me what they're doing because I, I don't get it after this we have something to kind of slow everything down uh we have jungle boy jack perry talking about his weird uh match at all out i wouldn't even really call it a match uh between him and christian cage in which luchasaurus turned heel again and was working for christian cage still and slammed uh jack perry through a thing and that was basically the end of the match uh now jack perry basically just saying i shouldn't have lost but i know what made me lose we'll see you again i'll see you again christian that one i i i get where the rematch is coming from even though i think maybe we shouldn't have had one but whatever i can i at least can kind of get behind this rematch so whatever but otherwise just the normal promo then Stokely Hathaway and his posse of people he's been hiring uh, for the past couple weeks comes out, uh, cuts a promo where he's basically just kind of healing it up to the crowd. I mean, uh, not really setting anything up or saying anything super crazy. Uh, they beat up one of the production assistants on AEW, which I think are uh, local wrestlers that they hire to be those guys. Uh, but yeah, they, they it's just Stokely Hathaway and a bunch of people beating him up. But I, I mean, I'm excited to see where this ends up. I, I actually really like where it led to at All Out. Uh, I can't wait to see what it ends up being after the fact with Stokely Hathaway. Uh, it feels like he's kind of pulled himself away from Jade Brand, or rather Jade Cargill in general. Um, I don't know if that is for sure. I don't know if I even really dislike that idea, honestly. But yeah, I can't wait to see what this ends up turning into. This is fun. I, I, I love this little like group of heels that basically take over a match and, and win it for one person in mind and with a mastermind at the top. Yeah, I, I, I like it. Can't wait to see where this ends up. Finally, the main event of Dynamite, we got Wheeler Yuta versus Daniel Garcia for the Ring of Honor Pure Championship. Uh, we got Daniel Garcia coming out with a really awkward entrance, um, and it's not his fault. Uh, he had the uh, he had a rapper come out and sing his theme song live, but this dude has like no rhythm whatsoever. He just is so off beat for everything, and he just is kind of mumbling through his words, or not mumbling, but more so like speeding through them really quickly. And I feel bad for him too, because maybe it's not exactly his fault. Um, he might not be able to hear the music that well because he's you know he's got the pressure of being in front of a crowd but yeah just a weird entrance it did not sound good i can't imagine most people would have liked it it just was weird otherwise this was a fun match super good uh 
a lot of tension, a lot of great storytelling in the ring uh, between Daniel Garcia and Wheeler Yuta. I'm glad to see it wasn't uh, a, a match where Daniel Garcia led himself to doing a lot of the tactics he was doing with the JS, which leads further into what I'm talking about with him needing to pull the trigger already and finally go to the other side, whatever that other side is, whether it be the BCC or just in general being a face or whatever. Uh, but otherwise, this was a really good match. These two put on a great little technical match. Like I said, a lot of great storytelling with Wheeler Yuta showing frustration and and uh, taking his two ring, uh, what is it, uh, rope breaks. The, super fun match. I enjoyed this really well, but again, I just kind of, it left a weird thought in the back of my mind, which was it ended with uh, Daniel Garcia winning a championship, which was great. And then it just kind of was like, now he's shaking hands with Daniel Garcia and Jericho comes out, but that's it. We don't get a confirmation as to whether he finally switched over or not. And it, yeah, weird. Um, otherwise, uh, this dynamite was fine a, a good one a really good one honestly it had one idea in mind i feel like which was let's show everyone that we can put on a wrestling show let's not worry about the backstage drama stuff let's go out let's have really good matches let's have really fun promos and you know progress storylines in ways that we feel like we need to and they did that i just i feel like the thing i didn't like was kind of the the rollback on a lot of the stuff that we had happen at all out a lot of the you know the outcomes with rematches and whatever obviously i know that like you can't really control the two main ones which is the vacating of the trios championships and the main belt like obviously i understand that but just some weird booking decisions i don't know where it's going to lead later on down the line maybe because of the nonsense that happened at all out it just feels way weirder but yeah otherwise though super solid dynamite totally fun Next up, we got Rampage uh, starting off with Darby Allen versus Sammy Guevara for the Grand Slam tournament. Again, match I don't fully understand why it was happening, but Sammy Guevara wins. <laughs> That's it. Uh, these two have a fine match, but then it just, like I said, it devolves into normal JAS stuff. Uh, and, I mean, that's fine. Sam Guevara's a heel. He always is. Rarely is he ever a face, honestly. Uh, but, you know, uh, Sammy uh, resulting in uh, cheating and, and doing whatever he can to win. Low blow, using Darby skateboard against him. Uh, wins a match. Uh, yeah. I think now he's going to be fighting against John Moxley. So, I mean, is there really any way that Sammy Guevara wins other than cheating? And if he does, man, are people really going to hate him and not in a good way? And also, I just wanted to make note of a funny little quote <laughs> during the, the match. Uh, I, I'm going to try not to use any footage for these that isn't already up on the YouTube channel, but I, can, I, I have to put this one in. It's pretty funny. AEW is on fire right now. Next, we finally see Samoa Joe come out to uh, pull a promo after making his re-debut again at uh, All Out after we haven't seen him since uh, Death Before Dishonor, really. Uh, finally coming out, just talking about, you know, feeling like he needs to... to be out there and please the crowd and uh, talking about the TV championship. Then he gets interrupted by Smart Mark Sterling, Tony Nese, and Josh Woods, who challenge him for the championship. And so, yeah, we're going to see that, I believe, next Rampage is what they said. Yeah, next week Rampage. So Samoa Joe versus Josh Woods for the TV championship, the Ring of Honor TV championship. Uh, yeah, cool. And then, oh no, Miro, where have you gone? You're stuck in promo land again. Oh. Seriously, I, I like Miro. He is a great wrestler. I love seeing him out there. I love seeing him in his interferences with matches or having his own matches or whatever. He did great at All Out. Man, why does he keep getting put in these weird, like, pre-recorded promos? I keep saying he gets stuck in promo land, and at this point I'm convinced Miro might just be a hologram. Uh, every time we see him, he's never out there doing any, you know, wrestling or anything like that. Not that he doesn't wrestle, but I feel like I haven't seen him wrestle on Dynamite or on Rampage or on Dark or on Elevation just pay-per-views because every time he comes out he's in these weird promos where he's in the back darkly lit where you can barely see him and he's talking weird stuff and oh Miro please come back to us where are you man then we got Madison Rain versus Serena Deeb the coach versus the professor in a pretty simple little match fun little kind of technical match not really that technical honestly uh just kind of okay. Uh, I feel like these two both have put on better matches, and this one was fine, but not one of their better ones. 
Then a Jade promo. Finally, we see Jade Cargill. I uh, haven't seen her since Hall Out. Talking to basically anyone in the women's division. Uh, putting another uh, open call for anyone to go against the TBS belt. And her, whoever that ends up being. We don't see anyone take up her call for it yet. But who knows who it is. Kind of feels weird. Uh, Jade, obviously great wrestler with a really long... Uh, reign on this championship and a great streak of wins and we don't really know who she's gonna face next and I feel bad because this is another one of those ones where like obviously she was gonna go up against uh, Chris Statlander but Statlander's out with an injury Uh, she had the the, uh, good match against Athena who was also really quickly in her own really cool attire at all out but yeah uh, now where does that put Jade? I don't know. This women's division needs help. It really, really needs help because there's a lot of good talent and there's not a lot of like exciting matches for them. Commercial break in between and we come back to Powerhouse Hobbs talking about his next chapter in the Book of Hobbs uh, and looking for his next championship after taking care of uh, Ricky Starks at AEW All Out, which was a sad outcome, but you know, then again, makes sense. Uh, obviously, my predictions are wrong. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, no, I can't wait to see what uh, Hobbs does in his single singles career. Uh, I don't know if this means that we're just waiting for Ricky Starks to come back or something. I don't think we are. Uh, I could totally see, and this is something I was talking about earlier, hinting towards. Earlier, obviously, on Dynamite, we had Wardlow talking about where, you know, it looks like I'm out, but I'm not done because this is Wardlow's world. I would love to see Powerhouse Hobbs go for that TNT Championship. I think that's a great match. I think it's a fun, big Hoss match against these two where they both just go at it. Two absolutely strong, dominant wrestlers who push for no one. And uh, yeah, I can't, I'd can't. i love to see that. I, I want to see that happen. Obviously, there's no real hinting of it in this promo. But hey, I'd love to see it. And I'm pretty sure most people would too. Then a uh, main event between Claudio Castagnoli and Dax Harwood for the Ring of Honor World Championship. Dax Harwood talking about wanting uh, singles gold for himself. You know, he's got the three tag belts on him. Now he wants to try and go for singles championships and he's going for the Ring of Honor one. Obviously, like every main event on, on uh, Rampage, <laughs> uh, starts off with a fun little promo between the two uh, opponents, whether they be tag or singles. And uh, yeah, fun little promo beforehand. And then an awesome, I think 20 minute plus match between these two technical brutal just hard-hitting super great match this is what I was missing uh between Hangman and Danielson like the speed and the pace of it felt really well between these two maybe that's because it's edited for TV obviously but like you can definitely tell these two wanted to put on a fun match between each other because they know that they both can and they both did they both did really well uh Claudio retaining the belt though obviously not really gonna see that championship just change on rampage but regardless they put on a really fun match i i yeah if anything for rampage check out that match definitely really good match otherwise a solid week for AEW. um like i said coming off the back all out having all that controversy all that drama to deal with they had a goal in mind which was to put on some great wrestling for both their main shows the dynamite and rampage and obviously elevation and dark are still their mainstays that are going to show basically the world that they can do this stuff, and they did. So, yeah, check out all the stuff that I totally recommended you to check out because it was totally worth it. Uh, you can watch Elevation on Mondays and Dark on Tuesday, then Dynamite on Wednesday and Rampage on Friday. Yeah, whole lot of content to watch and a lot of fun stuff. If you like AEW, if you like wrestling, it's totally worth it, I think. Yeah, we'll come back next week and talk about this uh, more. We'll talk about there next week, whatever that ends up being. Uh, you know, seeing the progression of this Grand Slam tournament's going to be interesting. I still think it should have been Hangman that won. But regardless, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to hear more wrestling talk, let me know down below. And if you have anything you want to talk about wrestling-wise, uh, whether you want to see certain storylines progress, certain people pushed, whatever it is, whether you have some opinion about the recent drama, because I'm sure everyone has their own, and man, is it a crazy week to talk about stuff. So yeah, I mean, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Comment anything you want. Comment your favorite town in the United States. I don't know, whatever. Uh, yeah. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more of this content as well, this wrestling. We will see more next week, definitely, because I, I, I enjoyed doing this. This was fun. And uh, otherwise, give a like on the video if you enjoyed. Check out these other playlists here at the end, which I'm going to link to. 
you know, you'll see them. But in the meantime, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash hardboiledboy. You can check out my Letterboxd, in which I review movies like every other day. Kind of slow down for a little bit this week, but don't worry, I'll get back to it. Uh, which is, I think, letterboxd.com slash hardboiledboy. Oh, these are on the screen, so I just kind of have to remember them. <laughs> uh, you can also follow me on Tumblr, hardboiledboy.tumblr.com, in which I repost or repost, <laughs> repost is so mean, a reblog, reblog gifts of yeah, movies and stuff that I enjoy, uh, whatever, you talk to me on there too if you want, uh, or if you have any questions about anything, or just want to talk about whatever, maybe want to talk more wrestling, uh, you can email me at hardboyboy at outlook.com, uh, otherwise, watch more wrestling, if you enjoy WWE and are looking to switch over to AEW, or just check out AEW too, I don't have the time for WWE stuff anymore, only AEW, I'm sorry, you know, yeah, I hope this video was entertaining and informational, <laughs> educational and and what is it no entertaining and information i think that's the stuff they use on like this sunday morning stuff anyway uh yeah i hope this helps you reconsider some stuff with AEW and see it as more of a just a solid wrestling company too um otherwise remember as always enjoy yourself